fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. When the open range was thrown open to homesteaders, the ranchers did their best to keep them from settling in the cattle country. They defied the orders from Washington, and violence might have been followed by open warfare if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. He believed there was a place for both homesteaders and ranchers in the great new territory, and it was his vision of the future that finally led to a better understanding between the two factions. It was he more than any other man who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Sagebrush. Huddled waiting for us. Hi, old Silver. Away! Rain had turned the main street of Sagebrush into a quagmire. But Jonathan Merrill had a good team, and the forward progress of the heavy wagon was slow but sure. At last he reined up in front of the general store and turned to his daughter, Rose. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, whoa. Here, Rose, you take the reins. This is the last place we can buy supplies before we hit the flats. You should have driven in closer to the sidewalk. That mud will be over your boots. I can jump from here at the sidewalk. Be careful. Yep. You see, I'm not too old for a little jump like that. Don't block the sidewalk, mister. Watch out, you're pushing me off. Hey! Paul! <laughs> you, you did that deliberately. Now look at me. Mud from head to foot. I thought you farmers liked it. Not when it wears pants and calls itself a man. Watch your talk, sister. Don't block the sidewalk. Hey! <laughs> That's good. You pull the same trick on him, stranger. I want to thank you for it. Serves the bully right. Go for your gun, mister. Anytime you're ready, Hank. Oh, yeah. You've got an engine to back you up. We'll settle this between ourselves. Think so? Flying W. So you think you'll need help? Sage Brush is a cattle town, see? You'll find out it don't pay to stick up for homesteaders. We're much obliged, mister, but we've run into this sort of thing before. There'll be a gang of roughnecks here in a minute, and you won't stand a chance against a lot of them. You better get on your way while the getting's good. And what about you and your daughter? Well, we'll just have to face them. The government land out on the flats just about ten miles from here is open, and that's where we aim to Olmstead. On the flats? That's what I said by Stony Creek. You got another thing coming. The flats are flying W grays. Homesteaders ain't welcome there. It's government land. You'll learn different. <laughs> Here's a man to tell you. Boss. What's up? I called for the boys because this hombre here was sticking up for the farmer and his girl. Where'd you collect all the mud? 
He pushed me into it. Just like you pushed the farmer. Well, yeah, but... It looks like an even break to me. <laughs> hey, look at Hank. Who dressed you up like a mud pie? <laughs> you want to make something of it, that's up to you. We'll stand by and see you get a fair deal. Well, I... I guess I had it coming. <laughs> look, you won't be laughing when I tell you the rest of it. This here farmer aims to homestead on the flats. What scent? By Stony Creek, Tom. What's your name? Jonathan Merrill. I'm Tom Winters of the Flying W. The flats belong to me. They belong to the government. I've come a long way to homestead there, and nobody's going to stop me. You ought to know that it's been tried before. Boss, can I say something? I'll handle this, Larry. Larry? Larry Daxter? That's me, Rose. I came from the same part of Missouri the Marrows did, Tom. Maybe they'll listen to me. Well, it's been ten years since you run away, Larry. Yeah, a long time. You've changed a lot. I guess you've forgotten your old friends. No, I haven't. You promised to write. I always meant to, but... Well, I'm, I'm just a cowboy. All I got's my horse and my saddle and 30 a month. And now you're going to try and make us move on. Well, I work for Tom Rose. It's part of my job to keep that range free of homesteaders. We can't let one of you come in. Not one. So you'll stop at nothing to keep us out. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, we'll stop at nothing. We aim to homestead on the flats. It's government land. Well, you've had your warning. <coughs> Going inside here and make sure Evan don't sell you any supplies. You can't do that. The next town is 60 miles west. You can try your luck there. As for you, cowboy. Meaning me? Yeah. Stick to your saddle and you'll keep out of trouble. We'll get along without supplies. And you'll soon find out the flats are unhealthy. Come on, Hank, inside. You too, Larry. Rest you get back to the ranch. You hear me, Larry? I'm coming. Oh, you sweetness, girl. I, I never want to see him again. Just don't get any ideas about double-crossing me. Rose, don't you understand? We need that range. We've got to have it. I know. And when you won't stop at anything, that means you'd even shoot a woman. The West is a fine country. Come on. Right. How to bring Silver, Scout. I want to thank you once more, stranger, before you say goodbye. You'll see us again, Merrill. The rancher warned you what to expect. You're in the right. <laughs> you can depend on our help. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. These trees give us plenty of cover, Tonto. We're less than a mile from the spot where Merrill's starting to build his cabin. Ah. We'll camp here until they're out of danger. That'd be a long time, maybe. Tonight, I want you to ride to Oak Grove again. Mm. You want me to get more supplies for Merrill? No. Those we left with him last night will be enough for a week. I'd go myself, but now that I've gotten rid of my disguise and I'm wearing a mask again... It's not I... good. You go to town. It's better for me to stay here. Ah. And what you want Tonto to do? Take this message to the telegraph operator. See that it's sent to the marshal at Circle City. Ah, here's Count. And get back as quickly as you can. Winters and his men haven't done anything yet, but I'm sure they'll try to stop Merrill from finishing his cabin. It won't be long before things start to happen. Ah, uh, do hurry. Get him up, Count. Got the cabin half done. I can see that from here on a clear day. Yeah, but I think I found out who's bringing them supplies, too. If it's Eben, I'll wring his neck. No, it ain't, though. They made friends with some outlaws. What's that? I'm telling you. The moon's full, so I could see real good. A masked man and an engine rode up with some stuff. They dumped it by the wagon where the old man and his daughter are sleeping, and then they rode off without stopping at all. A masked man and an engine? Yeah. Merrill's buying stolen goods. I tell you, they didn't stop at all. They just rode off. Merrill paid him first. Well, he's getting supplies anyway, and that means you can't starve them out. You gotta do something else. I will. Round up the boys. Larry, I thought you rode into Sagebrush. I did, but I didn't stay long. I picked up the mail. Look, this letter. I figured it might be important, so I brought it straight out. See what's up in the corner? United States government. Office of the Marshal in Circle City. What's he got to say to you? I don't know. Circle City? Hey, that's close to 200 miles. Easy. Well, I'll be dogged. What is it? So this is why he's got nerve enough to go ahead with that cabin. Huh? Listen. It's come to my attention that you've threatened Jonathan Merrill with bodily injury. 
In doing so, you've left yourself open to criminal charges. And if anything happens to said Jonathan Merrill, you'll be held accountable. Oh, you can't be. No interference with homesteaders' rights in the flats will be tolerated. There is other rangeland in your district which has not been open to homesteaders, and I would advise... Well, he'd advise, huh? Where's there any range with plenty of water like the flats? I'd like him to tell me that. You mean to say we just got to stand by and let Merrill go ahead with his cabin? If you think I'm going to do that, you're loco. You don't want to go to jail, do you? I won't. Lots of things can happen to Merrill. They will. There's one thing sure, Hank. Dead men don't talk. You'd kill him? He's clearing off my land. Uh, Tom, the Merrill's a friend of mine once. I don't want nothing to happen to him just because the old man's stubborn. Will you let me go and talk to him? It won't do no good. I think it will. Let me try tonight. Can't hurt anything anyway. I may need all of you boys before the night's over. Let me have an hour, Tom. Uh, all right, one hour. That's all. If you stay any longer at the Merrill's, you'll get a surprise. Good. Let's have some action. That's what I say. I'll be back. Hold your fire till I get here. You'd better hurry up, mister. Tom said one hour. There's someone coming, Paul. Maybe the masked man or Tonto coming back. What'd they do that for? They think we're asleep. I sure wish I'd woke up before they got away. It's only one horse. So why don't you get back in the wagon? I've got a gun here, Paul. If this rider means trouble, I can shoot just as good as you can. Oh, shucks, it's too late for trouble. Here he comes. Who are you? A friend. It's Larry, Paul. You won't need your gun. What do you want, Mr. Dexter? Rose, Tom just got a letter from the marshal at Circle City. Yeah, we sort of figured he might. It hasn't done you any good to notify the marshal. We didn't. Well, you must have. A friend of ours took care of it. Well, that letter's just made Tom hopping mad. He gave me one hour to come over here and talk to you. After that, well, I, I can't answer for what'll happen. We're not afraid of your boss. You better be, Jonathan. Why don't you pull up stakes and travel another hundred miles to the west? Is that all you have to say, Mr. We Dexter? I'm your friend, Rose. I don't want anything to happen to you. We're standing on our rights. They won't do you much good when you're dead. You talk just like your boss. But he can't scare us and neither can you. But don't you see? You're just being stubborn. You haven't got a chance against the Flying W crew. Tom's got 15 men. Including you. No, Rose. Your mind's made up, and I can't do anything to change it. I'm not going back to the ranch. What's that? I'm staying here with you, Jonathan. I'm fighting on your side. You, you mean it? Oh, Larry, now you're proving you're our friend. But we don't ask you to stay. This is our fight, not yours. And I don't want to see you lose your job. Yeah, that's right. You're a cowboy, not a farmer. My pa was a farmer. What was good enough for him was good enough for me. Larry. Yeah? I'm glad we've met again. Same here. Well, if you mean what you say, we could join forces, son. You homestead next to us, and we'll split up the work. First thing, Jonathan, I've got to ask you to leave the flats once more. My mind's made up, and I'm... All right, all right, that's settled. It took me long than I thought to get here. I ought to be back at the ranch now, and... Well, they'll, they'll be starting out, Jonathan. They're coming after us tonight. Yeah, that's what Tom said. We've got to find some place where Rose will be safe. I'm not stirring from this spot. But it's not a woman's place to fight off... That kind of talk makes sense back home, Larry. But it doesn't out here. Listen. Horses. They're coming already. Too bad it's clouded over. We could see them for half a mile. Get in the wagon anyway, Rose. That's a good place for all of us, I'd say. Go ahead. I'll cover you. Larry! Get into the wagon. Larry, don't! Oh, I can't hear their horses anymore. Maybe he's killed him. Maybe he's killed a lone ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When Rose Merrill heard the Lone Ranger call to Silver, she tried to stop young Larry Dexter from shooting at him. But the cowboy emptied his gun, and when the shots had died away, there was no sound of approaching hoofbeats. The night was quiet. Pa, you've got to go and see. You've got to find out if he's hurt. The Lone Ranger? Yes. He's been helping us ever since we got here. He was the one who got in touch with the marshal. He's brought us supplies, and Pa... I'm going. Better come with me, son. I will. If you're worried about me, Jonathan, I'm all right. Mask man. You're safe. We're all right, Miss Merrill. We reined up when the shooting started. That was me. I thought you were Tom and the boys from the ranch. I don't think you'll have to worry about them tonight. But when he read that letter from the marshal, he said he... Tom went... has brains, Larry. He may have lost his temper for a minute and said a lot of things he's thought better of since. Well, you may as well know that I've thrown in my lot with Rose and Jonathan. I'm sure that Tom means to drive him out. I'm sure that he'll try. And he'll start tonight. Tuttle and I have just come from the ranch, Larry. That's right. We saw the whole crew up at the ranch house. Tom was talking to them, but he sent them back to the bunkhouse, and later the lights went out. Nothing's going to happen tonight. He, he said he would... Don't misunderstand me. He isn't giving up. It'd be the first time if he did. He's only looking for some way to clear the flats and still keep out of jail. That's what I meant when I said he had brains. I'll match yours against his any day, mister. You tell us what to do, and we'll follow orders. Somehow, someway, Tom is going to set a trap for you. Tonto and I will never be far away, but you must be on your guard every minute. Oh, sure thing. Every minute, Jonathan. Night and day. Accused a man of murder when the death was accidental, Hank. Yeah? Uh, just thinking out loud. Hey, we've been sitting around doing nothing for three days. Why don't you quit thinking and tell us to do something? I will when the time comes. Let me go after that renegade Larry anyway. Yeah, you'll have your chance. Looks like a storm tonight, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. You stay close to the cabin at night. It's all finished now. Have you seen anything more of the mask man and the engine? Nope. Good. What are you driving at? Don't send many of the boys out today. We'll need the full crew a little later. When? <laughs> when the storm breaks, Hank. When the storm breaks. Find out why you sent out so many night riders? Uh, them ride north. Round up big herd. They round up at night with the storm coming on? Uh, drive cows out and open. Away from any shoulder. That's right. Maybe good you come take a look. I will, Tonto. Here, Silver. Wind come from north. When storm break, cattle run south. To the south. We'll take a look, Kimosabe. When we see where they bunch the cattle, we'll know what they plan to do. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. That lightning. Yeah. Lit up the whole sky. We're in for a real one. You better sleep inside the cabin tonight. No, thanks. I'll make my bed under the wagon. That'll keep me dry. I got my doubts. Well, it won't be the first time I've got a little wet. Don't forget what the mask man said. On guard every minute, night and day. He said Tom had brains. That sure enough means he's got sense enough to keep out of the rain. I'm staying outside, Jonathan. When the mask man gives an order, I aim to follow it. <laughs> dark. Yes. We can't really see the crew at all. The cattle are getting more and more restless every minute. Ah. And the crew aren't helping matters any. They should be on this side of the herd. All right. Unless... What do you think? The Merrill cabin is on this side of the creek, due south. Ah. That's it, Tonto. We're going to stampede the cattle. I heard this sense could level the cabin to the ground. Jonathan and Larry and Rose would be killed. No one would ever know it wasn't an accident. Hurts not to move now. And here's the storm. We've got to hurry. Get him up, Scout. Hello, Sue. Oh, 
gone. Wish I'd taken Jonathan's advice. It's a cloudburst. What are you complaining about, Captain? You aren't getting any wetter out there than I am under here. Matter of fact, I think I'll change places with you. That's funny. It's more than the storm that's making them nervous. Hey, that ain't thunder I hear. It sounds more like cattle. I heard on the prod. Larry! Mask man. I can't see a thing. Nothing to be nervy about if it's just a masked man, Captain. Hiya, mister. What's up? Hurry, Tonto. The cabin. Got Jonathan and Rose. Uh -huh. Saddle your horse, Larry. There's a stampede coming this way. We've got to make a run for it. Saddle's inside the wagon here. We haven't got enough horses. Yes, we have. Rose can ride with the captain, but Jonathan and I'll have to stay here and take our chances on the wagon team. You ride your own horse. Silver and Scout can carry double. We'll head for the rim rock to the south. That's plenty far. We won't be safe until we get there. This way, Jonathan! Yes, help your daughter up here. We're going to leave the cabin. That's all you it. can do. Step up. You ride with Tonto, Jonathan. Right. All set, Larry? Almost. I can hear them coming like this. How many are there? A thousand head. Can we get away from them? It's going to be close. Hurry, Larry. I'm ready. Then come on. Get him out of the Get him out of the The storm driving them on, the little band raised salt for the rim rock, but always behind them, closer and closer came the stampeding herd. The thunder in the sky was echoed by thunder from the plain, and the Lone Ranger urged the great horse Silver onward. Come on, Silver! We've got to reach the canyon ahead of the herd! Faster, Silver! Faster! Hours later, the storm had spent its fury, and Tom Winters waited in his ranch house for his men to return. There's somebody. It's almost dawn. About time some of them got back. Reach for the ceiling, Winters. What the... And don't try to make any trouble. You're coming with me. What are you talking about? Get out to the corral and saddle a horse. No outlaw's going to give me orders. I wouldn't argue if I were you. Your men aren't around, and they won't be. Won't be? Hurry up. Oh, I see. You're getting even for what the cattle did to your friend's cabin. How do you know about that? I just took a ride over that way. Answer me one question, Winners. Did you plan to have those people killed? Were they? What if I told you they were? I'd say it served them right. They must have heard those cows coming for miles. There were lots of ways they could have saved themselves. Plenty of time to ride for the rim rock. It was covered by the creek below the big bluff. They hadn't had enough sense to get out of that cabin. They deserved to die. But you didn't want them to die. I know. I'm not a killer like you. You're making a mistake about me. But I didn't think I'd made a mistake about you. What does that mean? You'll find out by sunup. Get moving. Say, we aren't climbing anymore. The floor of this canyon's sloping down. That's right. Where are you taking me? It won't be long before you can see for yourself. Just as soon as we round the next turn. You don't sound like an outlaw. You don't act like one. If you'd wanted to kill me, you could have done it back at the ranch. Yes, Winter. I don't savvy. This canyon is only about ten miles from your ranch. And yet you've never followed it. Why should I? It's time someone opened your eyes. Let's look down below you. A valley. Thirty miles long and five miles wide. Well, there's cattle down there. Where'd you come from? Your cattle, the herd that stampeded last night. How'd you get there? Your old men drove it down. This is your new range, Winters. What's that? You're leaving the flats for good. Not on your life. Isn't this a better range than the flats? Well, I'd have to look at it closer. It ain't quite as level, you but... You aren't going in for farming. Stop here, Winters, in front of this cave. Now what? You're a good cattleman, and you're one of the real pioneers in this district. Sure I am. That's why I got a right to the flats. You're giving them up or the marshal's going to learn what your men did last night. So that's your play. Turning me over to the law. The charge would be attempted murder. I saw your men start the stampede. You can't ring any of them in on it. They just did what I told them to. You're admitting your guilt? And I guess so. I've been thinking about it ever since it happened. I'm the one to blame if they're dead, and I guess I ought to pay for it. What's that shit? I'm inside the cave. Horse! That's Hank calling. Boss, they got us all prisoners. They'll send us to jail. You got away, masked man. I was doing just like you said. Hold them in there till you get everything settled. You aren't dead. Oh, no, not much, Tom. The girl and Merrill. I can't complain about my help, Mr. Winters. And Pa's helping Tano guard your crew. We're all prisoners, boss. They surprised us right at the foot of this canyon when we started to round up the herd after the stampede. Uh, uh, five of us against 15 of you. Yeah, but you had the Lone Ranger. If it hadn't been the for... The Lone Ranger? That's him, boss, the masked man. 
And do what he says. We don't want to go to jail. Well, what are you asking of me, masked man? That you obey the law. The flats have been opened to homesteaders. You're defying the government when you try to stop them from moving in. This valley here, it's yours for the taking. It's good range, but it isn't good farming land. You'll never be bothered by homesteaders again. You couldn't ask for any better range, boss. And we've been living ten miles away from it for years without even knowing it was here. Yeah, that's because the canyon looks like it's blind. When the masked man told us to drive the herd up it, I, I thought he was loco. Mister, I figured other folks were stubborn and ornery. But I'm the one who gets the medal. I don't deserve it, but you've done me an awful big favor. We'll leave the flats to the homesteaders. You can let them all go now, Tonto. We'll start rounding up the rest of the cattle today. Not today, Winters. Hmm? The first thing you and your men have to do is rebuild the Merrill cabin. Sure thing. It'll be a pleasure. A pleasure? I apologize for the way I've treated you and your pa, Miss Merrill. But I'm going to make up for it. From now on, you'll find me a good neighbor. I ain't him, Wasabi. I'm ready, Tonto. Masked man, did he say he'd be a good neighbor? It's true, Pa. Well, live and learn. The West needs all of you, cattlemen and farmers. Just remember that the future of the country depends on your working together. We sure will. Mister, you can depend on us. Adios. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.